going to the parts store to get a new wheel bearing for my 2001 E46. Then we're going to go to Harbor Freight. We're going to get some tools on the cheap to get this wheel bearing replaced. So today's going to be a good day, folks. Let's get after it. Before we get started, I want to show you the new tools and parts we got today. We got a replacement bearing. I got a slide hammer kit with a hub puller. Hopefully that'll get the hub off. And then I got a bearing remover set, being that I don't have one, I needed to reinvest. This was 99, this was 99, and this was 80 bucks. So, so far we're into this job about 280. Get this wheel off. I think first step's gonna be pulling this exhaust, or at least just hanging it, and getting the rear end to drop down. Then we'll pull the sway bar down, then we'll start DCing the brakes, get the axle pulled out, and then we'll get access to the bearing. This piece, I'm using a half inch impact to a half inch to three eighths adapter to a long extension to an E14. All right, now that that axle's loose, we can start by uh, popping off these brakes. This rotor out. This parking brake is missing. It's broken off, so we're gonna have to uh, rebuild these parking brakes. All right, so now that the differential side of the axle is loose and the hub is loose, I'm gonna take this air hammer and I'm gonna put this nut on just a couple threads to protect the threads and then uh, just fit this in here and we're just gonna knock the, the splines loose from the hub. We got the axle out, so now we can start working on the hub and the wheel bearing. Now this hub, I'd say that bearing's bad, it's pretty noisy. Let me get the mic on it for you. So here's my new slide hammer set. We're looking for a hub puller that will match. It's not perfect, but it'll work. Let's drop in some lug bolts. All right, I haven't done this job in a while, so bear with me, but here we have the hub removed. <clears throat> you can see that inside race came out with the hub, so we'll have to cut this or get it removed off the hub before we reinstall it. But now we have access to our bearing, so we can start working on that. All right, now we can get this uh, snap ring removed. New bearing tool. So first thing we need to do is find a cup that will receive the bushing. So we got this to press the bearing out, we got our cap to receive it, then we have our bolt that's going to lock it all together. Nice. My fan clutch wrench is a 32 I believe, so it does match. Here's our old bearing guys, that inside race came out. Here's the back side. It's FAG bearing. I mean, it's hard to get a gauge off of it with the inner race being out, but this thing's definitely shot out, so. Whoo! All right, that part's done. Not too bad. 
clean out this carrier. What I'm going to be doing is using this one as a backing and then I'll run my washer and my nut off the back side of that and then I'm going to use this cap here as a driver because the outside diameter is the same as the outside diameter of the bearing. We'll attach this on and we'll drive the new bearing back uh, using the same method as we used to pull it out. New bearing is installed. I got enough room to fit the uh, snap ring in there so I know it's nice and all the way flush with the back. Um, next we'll get the snap ring back in and start the process of going back together. However, I am going to pause though because these parking brake shoes are done so I'm going to need to order some more shoes and uh, get those installed. All right, we're using Grandpa's Dremel tool with a 1 seconds cutoff wheel. Just try to get a crack in this to where we can then crack it. Hopefully this inner race will, will break off. Got this badass bench vise my old man rebuilt for me, but I just don't have a toolbox to install it on yet. Hey! That came off pretty easy, huh? And no damage to the hub. Oh, yeah. So here's our race. So if you see, I didn't punch through. It cracked. So I just cut it, hit it with the wedge. Hit it with a punch until it cracked on the broke si on the back side. Well, guys, it's gone really good so far. It's been maybe about less than two hours. I got the new wheel bearing installed. I have the hub ready to go back on. However, the parking brake shoes are missing, broken, and delaminated on this. And I'd rather do the parking brake shoes with the hub still off. That way, it gives me a little bit more room for the repair. So I got those parts coming. From here, I'm going to get cleaned up, and we're going to have to pause until I get those parking brake shoes tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Welcome back y'all. Day two. It's a beautiful day and we got some brake parts. We got new parking brake shoes for the rear. They're from O'Reilly so they're brake best band. Nothing special but let's get these slapped on keep this wheel bearing job going. I was doing drum brakes once with my friend Ryan Rafkin and uh, I was picking off a drum brake spring like this with a pair of needle nose pliers and he was standing next to me and I slipped and I sent the pair of needle nose straight through the side of his nose and punched a hole in the side of his nose with my pliers. It was pretty, pretty savage. I felt so bad. Okay, there's the second spring. And then there's a little key so it's slotted on the backing plate. I'll get this off. I'll give you a better look at it. So this latches into the parking brake here and when you pull it, it causes these to spread. Adjustment screw that allows our brakes to get tighter or looser depending on how we need to adjust them. So we have our two locking springs that lock our shoes to the backing plate and then we have our smoked parking brake shoes. It's been years since I've done parking brake shoes. Literally, I haven't done one of these BMW parking brake jobs in a long time, so if I'm missing anything, please feel free to chime in. I'm no master technician. I know a little bit, but I'm not a master tech, so I'm sure there's lots of people out there with a lot more knowledge than, than me, so 
Don't be shy. Something like this. Memphis. That's how I got to Memphis. a big fan of drum brakes I don't really like them um, parking brakes are you know a necessary evil I probably should have renewed the hardware but it is what it is it's all good I think it'll work just fine so uh, I'm gonna test fit the hub real quick and then adjust this and then we'll uh, try to keep chugging along this car also needs rear brakes and rotors but we're not going to do that today I'm gonna run these rotors how they are and then we're gonna uh, renew all the rear brakes at a later date because I'm not happy with any of the parts suppliers I can get around here for brake parts. So I need to order online. But I got some more parts coming for this car, so don't worry. We're going to be staying busy. I got lots of work to do with you guys. Okay, so I test fit the rotor onto the parking brake shoes. It fits good now that I got it situated. Now I need to get a backing plate behind this wheel bearing so I can protect that inner race as I press the hub back into the bearing. Okay, so there's this piece in the kit, which this lip sits flush with the back of the uh, carrier, and then this piece protrudes forward inside and makes contact with that inner race. So we'll be able to use this piece on the back side in order to suck that hub back in without damaging our bearing. All right, folks, here's the setup. We got the freshly cleaned up hub and we have this piece that I found which fits great into the center of the hub. So we're gonna run a washer. We're gonna run this through to drive the hub then we're going to use this piece to back it, like so. Then we run another washer on the back side and our nut, like so. And our 27 on the front, and we start driving this thing in. That went really smooth. That worked great. This Harbor Freight tool has paid for itself already. Great investment. That slide hammer worked really good too. So if you're in the US and you got to do this job, that wheel bearing tool from Harbor Freight's a third of the price, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. Hear the difference? That's right, you can't hear it because the difference is so great. Hell yeah. So that's good. Now let's um, put the rotor on and, and uh, adjust the drum brakes maybe and then we'll get the axle back in. And I'm gonna have to clean this hub again too. This rotor again. Nice. All 
All right, so learn from me. I don't have a uh, CV axle installer, so I had to uh, give this axle a couple taps from the backside with the mallet. Um, I may have, you know, distorted the backside of that CV axle a little bit. So I would recommend using a CV axle puller. Um, I wasn't able to today on this job, but I would recommend it just so you don't damage the uh, CV axle like I did. But you know, I got to showcase my mistakes too, or else there wouldn't be anything to be learned. Um, they have those real thin collar CV axle pullers where they'll bite onto the, the, to the threads of the CV axle then help you pull it into the hub. Like I said, I don't have it, so we're gonna make it work. I just gotta be gentle. Gonna make sure the axle looks nice and flush on the diff side. This, let's put this disc rotor on. This thing does need pads and rotors, but we're not gonna do them today. All right, we're gonna give this one last rip with the impact gun and then uh, lock this nut down. Now, I should be renewing this nut, but I don't have a new nut, so we're not gonna renew it, so don't give me a hard time, okay? So the wheel bearing and the brakes are back together. I need to put the exhaust back up as well as the sway bar, and then we'll bounce over to the other side and do the parking brake. Get this tire back on. Right on. This side's done. Happy and confident with it. Okay, so we got to do the parking brake on this side too. Let's get started. Let me get some tools. All right, I got it bungeed out of the way for you guys. I know you like that. I never bungee brake calipers, but I do it for you guys. Same thing. This parking brake shoe's gone. So, definitely do. You could grease these pads uh, where they touch the backing plate and also where they touch <clears throat> this uh, parking brake mechanism and the tensioning spring, but I, I'm, I don't really grease BMW brakes and I've never had an issue with it that way, so, uh, but everybody's different.
I would uh, love to find a cheap latex glove manufacturer again because these nitrile gloves just suck. They just, they don't do a good job at all. They tear so easy. So that one went well. You can see this brake pad just cracking and delaminating. This one was a goner. So explains why I didn't have any parking brake action on the lever. So we done folks. Wheel bearing and parking brakes repaired. All right, let's get cleaned up. You should probably wear a mask because I got some black boogers, yo. I mean, I used to get lots of black boogers, but it bothers me a lot more now that I'm not wrenching as much. But try to keep that out of your nose when you're doing brakes. And for those of you who are asking where I was jacking from when I'm going here in the center and I do both these sides at the same time, uh, there's a pinch seam that runs along the unibody just right here underneath the rocker. So if you just position your jack lined up with that, it's got plenty of strength to lift the side of the vehicle up. You go off this jack pad, then you can only jack stand that one, and then you got to let that one down, and yeah, it just gets messy. So I just like to jack up here in the center. I also wanted to go down in stages too because I had each side up so high. I didn't want it to be, you know, straight 30 degree angle. Put too much lateral stress on these jack stands. Let's check the parking brake. Oh yeah, it's nice and tight. Check this out. Oh yeah, just holds it. Just locks her down. Oh yeah. UPS man is here and my gate is blowing shut. Let me fix that. So yeah, I'm trying to get this thing ready for sale. Um, if you guys are interested, I wanted to open up to my viewers first. I still got quite a bit more work to get done on her, but when she is ready, I will be listing her for sale, and I'll give my viewers first crack at it if you guys are interested. So let me know, 2001 E46, 330i, automatic five-speed trans, 199,000 on the odometer. I've done... Let's see, I've done water pipes and all the coolant hoses. I've done the thermostat. I resealed the intake manifold with a new breather. It's got fresh spark plugs. It got, um, let's see what else. It's got fresh spark plugs. It's got fresh belts. It's got a new cooling fan. It's got a new fuel filter. Um, and I'll think of more stuff as we cruise. I'm excited to do the engine mounts on this car because it's got a lot of engine vibration from those mounts being shot out so it's going to make this thing drive like brand new once I renew those.
cruising great at 80. No squeaks, no chirps. I can hear that wheel bearing squeaking at highway speeds. I would hit a specific RPM and it would just start chip, 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 chip. Nice. Parking brake, e brake works great. Oh, look at them guys just chilling out with the chickens and ducks. I love that. Let's check the pick it up. She pulls, I mean, that was 80 miles an hour right there, 85, and it pulls strong. Trans shifts really good. Uh, this car is pretty clean. Interior, I'd call it a, I don't know, seven out of 10. Exterior, seven out of 10. Uh, mechanically, after I'll be done with it, it'll be a nine, nine and a half out of 10, I think. Needs an ambient temp sensor, because, uh, the front left pork chop fender well is missing and that temp sensor got raped out but I could fix that easy all right folks well that's gonna wrap it up for today we got that rear left wheel bearing knocked out we replaced both of the parking brake shoes on the rear so that parking brake is now rectified I have control arm bushings and engine mounts coming for Tuesday so we're gonna start tearing into that but all in all, this episode was a great success. I just want to give you a reminder. Here is the wheel bearing tool I got from Harbor Freight. It was 99 bucks. Here's the slide hammer and hub puller set that I got from Harbor Freight, 99 bucks. The replacement wheel bearing was $80. The parking brake shoes were $40. So all in all, we made a lot of really good progress on the car. We're getting it closer to uh, being sale ready, which I'll be real happy about that. Get some money to help keep fun in the channel. Before we sign off for the day, guys, I just wanted to introduce you to the newest member of the team. This is Sage. She's a pit bull mix. She's like nine weeks old. I took uh, this one, Corona. I took her mushroom hunting with me last week, and we just got hammered by ticks. There must have been like 15, 20 ticks on Corona, another five or 10 on me. So I got those all cleaned off, and I went with my girlfriend to the pet store to go get some uh, tick shampoo so we could get her bathed up and make sure they were all dead and cleaned up off her and this little puppy was up for adoption at the kennel and uh, I was just vulnerable that day it was a weekday for me but I've been wanting a puppy for a long time and I couldn't pass this little girl up she was real sweet and a lot smaller size than her two brothers in the litter and so they asked her if we wanted to take her home and foster her for a couple nights which we did and then uh, it was just too hard for me to give her back up. She's been such a sweet puppy so far. She loves to cuddle and uh, she's learning real fast. She's already learning how to sit and doing real good with potty training. So you'll probably be seeing some more of her as she grows up over the channel. And uh, I'm real happy about it. So everybody meet Sage, Sage, meet everybody on YouTube. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for uh, sticking around if you made it this far. And as always, I'll see you on my next day off.